Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Outside with live cam this morning, I bundled up, put on a vest, some mittens, several hats and everything. Boy, am I the idiot. It's actually very mild out there this morning. Matter of fact, it feels like it almost wants to rain. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, December 14th. Thanks for joining us this morning. You weren't listening to Mike. No, I was kidding. listening to Mike, but I did overdress a little bit. I had on one layer really? and I decided, yeah, it didn't really need it. But I mean, look, we're still in the uh, lower 60s yeah, that's, this morning. That, that's true. I guess already in my house, it was already maybe too warm. I think we accidentally left the, the you know, the individual heaters on and right. we were already yeah. too warm. <laughs> well, I had the furnace on this morning just to take the chill off the house. Anyway, Mike is here with more on, on me and my bad decisions. <laughs> well, if you're, you know, kids waiting at the bus stop, maybe uh, grab a jacket because it is sure. sort of that damp chill. Even though sure. we're at 60, there's all that humidity. What about an umbrella? Uh, probably won't need it. I mean, okay. uh, there are a couple of sprinkles showing up on okay. radar. Uh, over the next couple of days, we'll have a few showers here and there. But uh, fog is the big issue really this morning. You can see off in the distance how it's getting kind of hazy looking over there at the uh, airport. Two thirds of a mile visibility, Randolph, three quarters, New Braun, Falls, mile and a quarter, Pleasanton, and still some fog out around Kerrville. But most of it is in the eastern half of our area and just cut the area right in half. And that's the dense fog advisory. It is in effect up until uh, 10 o'clock this morning. Visibility, of course, is going to get down below about a quarter mile in some areas. It will get worse before it gets better. There's a lot of mist out there and yeah, you know, talking about umbrella, we do have a couple little sprinkles down to the uh, southeast and you know, just little sp almost spits and drizzles here and there. So if you want to have an umbrella handy, it's not like we're going to see any big, big showers. Uh, a couple of those again scattered about here and there this morning, but uh, it's just like I said, going to be the fog. That's the big issue around here. Temperatures. Yeah, it is mild upper 50s, low 60s. We are about 15 to 20 degrees above normal right now. A ton of humidity out there, and that's going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the week. Mold is on the low side and throughout the rest of the morning. Again, what you see is what you get. We're going to stay right around 60 here in town fog a sprinkle or two or some of that mist out there and then a high temperature today all the way up to 75 degrees. The only thing that changes in the next few days is the name of the day and the date. <laughs> Weather's going to stay the same all the way through Friday. Then we get some changes coming in here for the weekend. Steph, Mark. All right, much more to discuss coming up with Mike Osterhage. San Antonio police investigating a deadly shooting on the east side happened last night just before 8 p.m. on Crockett and Geevers. Police say the two men involved were in a drug deal when shots were fired. One man was found dead inside a vehicle. The other was found shot in a nearby lot. He was rushed to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. And now to another big story we are following this morning. Two Omicron cases were announced in Bear County, but with Delta still a concern, how will it impact how Omicron spreads in our community? We asked a doctor at University Health that question and whether we can expect another surge. Myra Arthur has that story. We feel like we haven't seen an, an immediate surge in inpatients. Local hospitals are paying close attention to the Omicron variant, as two cases have now been confirmed in Bear County. Dr. Brian Alsip, the chief medical officer at University Health, says Omicron could have been here as early as November. Most people are not surprised that we've found it here. It just uh, it takes a little bit longer to do the sequencing and therefore uh, that's what took a little while to identify it. Now Omicron will be competing with the Delta variant. Dr. Alsip says the Delta became the dominant variant within months of being found. Now depending on what Omicron does that may very well do the same thing and it could take uh, the same amount of time or it could be more quick or, or it may take longer. Uh, we, we just don't know yet. He says Omicron's impact is so far not as severe as Delta, but everyone should still take precautions, especially those considered high risk. Those who have not been vaccinated certainly are the most susceptible. You know, those who are older, those who have underlying medical conditions, those that have a compromised immune status, they're at higher risk. And the best way to protect yourself? A, a booster is probably a, the best protection against this variant. And that was Myra Arthur reporting. Dr. Alsip also encourages people to wear a mask and be mindful of how many people you plan to have over during the holidays. And according to Metro Health, one in three people in San Antonio are not fully vaccinated. The Alamo Dome drive through clinic is open from noon to 8 p.m. Wednesday through Friday for anyone looking to get their vaccine. Whether it be their initial dose or booster, right now on KSAT.com, we have a full list of vaccination sites.
Major new developments from the investigation into the January attack on the U.S. Capitol during a vote last night on whether to hold former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows in contempt of Congress. Lawmakers investigating the attack revealed text messages sent to Meadows by former President Trump's son, as well as messages sent by various Fox News personalities. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details. This morning, newly revealed text messages show former President Trump's closest allies wanted him to take action on January 6th as rioters were storming the Capitol. Congresswoman Liz Cheney quoting this text message sent to then Chief of Staff Mark Meadows from Donald Trump Jr. He's got to condemn this <laughs> Meadows responded, quote, I'm pushing it hard. I agree. Donald Trump Jr. texted again and again urging action by the president. And as rioters stormed the Capitol, Fox News hosts sent these messages to Meadows. Quote, Mark, the president needs to tell people in the Capitol to go home. This is hurting all of us. He is destroying his legacy, Laura Ingram wrote. Quote, can he make a statement? Ask people to leave the Capitol, Sean Hannity urged. The texts were revealed last night as the House committee investigating the riot voted to hold Meadows in contempt of Congress. He's refusing to testify, even though he provided the messages to the committee. The hearing was not carried live on Fox News, and the channel did not immediately respond to requests for comment about the text messages. Congressman Adam Schiff also read a text message sent to Mark Meadows the day after the riot. We tried everything we could in our objection to the six states. I'm sorry nothing worked. The day after a failed attempt to stop the peaceful transfer of power through violence, an elected lawmaker tells the White House chief of staff, I'm sorry nothing worked. That is chilling. The full House could vote as early as today on whether to ask the Justice Department to prosecute Meadows for contempt of Congress. In a separate development, organizers of the January 6th rally near the White House are suing Verizon, trying to prevent the company from sharing phone data with the House committee. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Now 437, about 61 degrees. And if you're still crossing off gifts on your Christmas list, you'll want to keep it right here. So to come some unconventional ideas you may not have thought about yet. And after the break, one of the kind holiday survival class for those recovering from substance abuse. And taking a look outside with live cam, is that our shot right now? Yeah, I think the, uh, well, it could be frozen from yesterday. Okay. That almost looks like a daytime shot because that's what it looked like with the clouds over us all <laughs> day yesterday. Yeah, that, I mean, that was kind of freaking me out. We're at 61 degrees. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 440. Christmas is just days away, and it can be a tough time for those going through substance abuse recovery. Blue Heron Recovery here in San Antonio hosting a one-of-a-kind holiday survival class. It's meant to help families touched by substance abuse prepare for a happier and healthier holiday. The class will talk about boundaries, communication, and making a plan for all kinds of situations that can arise. Not wanting people to bring up things that might trigger you, um, or if you're further along in your recovery, telling people not to be, not to have to walk on eggshells around you. And the class is open to the public, not just people in recovery. That's happening tomorrow at the Los Patios Sober Community Campus. We have more information on our website at KSET.com. This can be a tough time of year for a lot of folks, whether they're going through substance abuse or grief. It's, it's really a tricky time, and we're thinking about you for sure. 441, about 61 degrees. The FBI is investigating the death of a woman who fell overboard from the balcony of her state room on a cruise ship. That's next in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, cruise ship mystery. About 3 a.m., um, we were wakened by a, a general announcement across the ship with a warning going, man overboard, man overboard, man overboard. The FBI investigating a deadly mystery at sea, a woman falling overboard from this cruise ship in the middle of the night, 35 miles off the coast of Mexico. There's a lot of questions, you know, and a lot of questions not being answered. All I can tell you is this has been the cruise from hell. The woman in her 20s, who's not yet been identified, was traveling on the Carnival Miracle. The cruise line saying she fell early Saturday morning from the balcony of 
driver's stateroom. Passengers say they were told unreleased security footage from the ship captured her fall. I had a balcony, so I went outside and looked, and immediately they were throwing life preservers. They threw two of those out in the ocean. And we'll have much more on this unfolding mystery at sea coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. 445 right now. Good news if you still have some holiday shopping to do. This morning we're talking about unconventional gift ideas. I will be listening. 12 on your side's <laughs> Marilyn Moritz has some ideas that are out of the box and guaranteed to be in stock. Instead of toys or video games, Sarah Peterson suggests her relatives give her three sons something a little different. I like to encourage um, giving them something like a class. So they've helped pay for swim classes. My oldest, Isaiah, he wanted to do a play this year. So we just offered that as, why don't we do this as one of your holiday presents this year? The time may just be right for unconventional gifts. If you're worried about getting your gift in time or being able to even find the gift, you could consider gift cards, you could consider online subscriptions. Um, it's not as impersonal as you may think it might be. Like signing up your busy cousin for a meal kit service. Many contain quality ingredients and easy recipes. Know somebody who needs a little more zen? Consider a subscription to a meditation app like Calm, Paziz, Headspace, or maybe a gift card to Spa Finder so she can book a massage. For the friend who loves fitness, a subscription to ClassPass gives access to gym classes at local fitness studios and online. There's nothing like the gift of knowledge. A subscription to Masterclass, Wondrium, or Skillshare let loved ones take online classes taught by experts in everything from art to zoology. For nature lovers, there's a National Parks Pass for $80. That gives access to more than 100 national parks, monuments, and battlefields for a year. If you're still struggling, you could consider donating in somebody's name. It'll spread the holiday cheer even further. And don't forget about memberships or passes to local places such as the Witty Museum, the Museum, or the Zoo. They always fit and they're always in stock. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Man, we covered a bunch of these at nine the other day, but she had way more ideas. Yeah, very good ideas. Actually, uh, we were a recipient that we, my daughter, uh, got a gift card to uh, for an art class. Uh -huh. And it, we had never been there before and she loved it. And now we've gone back multiple times. So is it something that Rooney's doing on her own or you do as a family? Uh, it's it's her, it's for okay. like, it's for kids. Gotcha. You know, she gets a canvas and she gets to paint her, you know, her little project. In Marilyn's story, one of the ideas was giving somebody a membership to like a fitness app and then sound she made when that suggestion was made. <laughs> I was like, mm. are you sending the right kind of message there? But maybe it's somebody who's really into fitness, right, like, like right, Mike right. Osterhage. Right, right. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. My wife. Your wife works me. out and she, she makes you work out too. <laughs> Mike. Okay. Yes, uh, it looks like this picture has gotten a little bit soupier just in the past uh, about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, still, uh, well, we still have the dense fog advisory, obviously, up until 10 o'clock for the eastern half of our viewing area. And, well, now visibility was five miles, dropped down to two, still a third of a mile there at Randolph, mile and a half Stinson, Pleasanton just a mile, and New Braunfels has also dropped down. We do have some fog over there toward Castroville, a little bit around Kerrville, and even though we don't have dense fog advisory off to the west, obviously some is showing up there in Rock Springs, but again, the thickest fog, eastern half of our area, and it is definitely gonna be sticking around, mist and drizzle with that, and then also, a couple of light little sprinkles, even a few, well, basically just showers down there around Beeville, Victoria. Everything is sliding straight up to the north. And dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, are up a good 20, 25 degrees, 30 degrees pretty much, or even 35 degrees almost at Rock Springs compared to this time yesterday. So there's that much more humidity out there. That's not going to allow temperatures to drop down, and that's going to keep us very, very warm for low temperatures as well as the cloud cover the next few days. And then high temperatures, of course, we, when you have such a warm start, it doesn't take that much to get up there into the mid and upper 70s, and that's going to be the case the next couple of days. Here's the uh, computer model for this afternoon, and uh, yeah, a couple of uh, sprinkly showers, primarily off to the east. Don't be surprised if there is a little bit of a sprinkle out there. I'm just thinking cloudy skies for the next few days. I doubt if we see really any sunshine. I know there are a few brighter spots yesterday, and we may see that, you know, a peak or two here or there, but pretty much going to be socked in for the next few days. And again, a couple little sprinkly showers here. And there is a, a weak front which may lie in the area by Thursday, Friday, 
perhaps a slightly better chance for a shower or two, one or two of them Thursday, Friday. But the better chance of rain is going to be coming in here once we get into the weekend with the more potent front that's going to be moving on through here. So what that's going to do is come through late Friday, early Saturday morning and get rid of all that humidity. And then as dew point temperatures drop down Saturday, uh, the actual air temperatures are also going to be plummeting throughout the day on Saturday. So here's a longer range computer model. And again, this one also keeps a lot of clouds around here. And as we go into late Friday, Saturday, here comes the front. Decent chances of rain. I mean, some folks could get an inch, inch and a half of rain when it's all said and done. It looks like it's just going to be one of those kind of cold. Stay on the couch, um, stay in your pajamas all day on Saturday. Watch some movies and that's going to be the situation into Saturday night, early Sunday morning, and then the rain for the most part is going to be clearing on out of here. Maybe a couple of straggling showers by later in the day on Sunday, and it's going to stay very chilly over the weekend. So forecast today 72 at noon cloudy uh, again. You can't rule out a sprinkle or two here and there, and then a high temperature today gets up to 75 degrees and we'll even top that over the next couple of days getting into the upper 70s. Low temperature stay in the mid and upper 60s. Fog, sprinkles, mist, a shower, sprinkle here and there in the next few days. Slightly better chance Thursday, Friday, and then still a good looking chance of rain for Saturday and lingering into Saturday night and dropping temperatures throughout the day. So it'll be just cold, damp, grilled cheese and soup Saturday. I just found a much better unconventional idea for you. It's uh -oh. a necktie of the month club, and there are oh. two or three of them out there. You'd dig that, wouldn't you? Oh. That would be nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll let somebody know. Get the same one and we can match. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, Steph, wow. what are you doing? Yeah, so. 451, about 61 degrees. And just ahead, we are talking about some of the top film nominees for the Critics' Choice Awards. That's next in your Spotlight News. Here are your lottery numbers real quick this morning. Pick 3, 727, Fireball 3, Daily 4, 6166, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 7, 10, 13, 30, 32. Texas 2 Step 1, 4, 24, 28. Bonus ball 25. And your Powerball numbers 10, 30, 37, 53, 59. Powerball 4, Power Play 2. Good luck. Side story in Belfast. The top film nominees for the Critics' Choice Awards. The two critically acclaimed dramas snagging 11 nods apiece. Dune and The Power of the Dog followed with 10 nods. The Critics' Choice Awards will air live January 9th on The CW and TBS. She's the youngest solo artist to debut at top Billboard's Hot 100 Singles chart. And now Olivia Rodrigo is Time's Entertainer of the Year. The honor caps a big year for the 18-year-old, who also snags seven Grammy nominations and a number one album in 2021. One hour to press. You're fired. Wes Anderson's latest film, The French Dispatch, hits streaming today. Veteran actor Henry Winkler, among the ensemble cast, his first time working with Anderson, telling me he loved the experience. Wes is nurturing. He creates... Um, a world that everyone is welcome in. You learn the language of Wes. You, and, and your job in the structure is you're there to help him meet his vision. The French Dispatch is available today for streaming on demand. And Tick Tick Boom actress Vanessa Hudgens with a birthday today, she's 33. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And check out this video. A family in LaGrangeville, New York, landed a spot in the Guinness World Records. Now, get this. Six, uh, 686,811 lights make up this magical display. Spirals, snowmen, animals, dozens of icicles clinging to branches all are choreographed to 250 different songs. Wow. Spanning eight miles of extension cores. It takes eight weeks to create this masterpiece. The family behind the creation teams up with a fire department <laughs> there. Wow. To collect donations to support the firefighters and local charities. Last year, they raised more than $80,000. That's pretty cool. A uh, great partnership, too. When you've got eight miles of extension cords, you might want to be friends with the fire department, right? <laughs> I would think so. Just in case. Beautiful. That wow. Is. Yeah. L never heard of LaGrangeville, New York. I haven't either. And I was mm. like trying to look at the video uh, as well. And it was yeah. a really, really pretty light this way. Oh, Merry Christmas, everybody. 457, about 61 degrees. And ahead in our next half hour, new details in the wake of the devastating tornadoes. After the break, we're live with a look at the damage.
Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Now have I five new details about candidates in the race for the Bear County Judge. And taking a look outside with live cam, it looks uh, pretty foggy out there. We're at 61 degrees. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, December 14th. Thanks for being with us. We'll get to weather and traffic in just a few minutes, but first we have a report from CNN. Here's CNN's Isabel Rosales in Mayfield, Kentucky, live. This morning we are learning that Candle Factory, two miles away from here, actually took a direct hit from that tornado. Authorities are now also saying that they feel confident no one remains underneath that rubble. They use canines, they use detection equipment, and they triple checked a list of those that were accounted for against those that were unaccounted for. In total, eight people died there. It's still a dire situation. It's a race against time. Search dogs have been brought in to comb through massive piles of tornado destroyed ruins in Kentucky in hopes to find anyone who may be buried. We're going to keep hoping and keep working until we can make sure that everyone has been found and identified and every family has some peace. Hundreds of miles of death and devastation spawned by at least five confirmed tornadoes are being investigated by the National Weather Service. We actually have one of uh, arguably the longest uh, tornado tracks on the ground in recorded history. At, at, at this point, it's scripted at 227 miles long. Dawson Springs mayor says 75% of the town is gone. It's just devastating. You can't ride through town and look at it. We're finding out that the recovery is going to take years. Kentucky's governor says he believes one of the most rare and powerful tornadoes struck the state. When what I think will be an F4 and F5 tornado touches down and stays on the ground for 200 straight miles in a state with 120 counties, you have this many counties that have damage and this many counties that need help. Survivors say they feel lucky to be alive. We're trying our best to hold on to what we have. And President Biden does plan to survey the damage here tomorrow in Kentucky. He's working with the governor, Andy Bashir to make sure that he does not get in the way of the efforts here. Because when a president comes into town, that's a long tail of cars, of people, staff, security. He doesn't want that to become a distraction. He's also um, asking his team that along with federal disaster sites to help with food and water distribution, that they also set up sites for booster shots, all as COVID-19 cases increase here across the country. Live in Mayfield, Kentucky, I'm Isabel Rosales. Back here at home, we're helping those who were impacted by the devastating tornadoes. Our KSAC community partners, along with the Red Cross, will be hosting a phone bank tomorrow. That is uh, December 15th from noon till 7 p.m. And keep it right here on KSAT and KSAT.com for more information on how you can donate. We're going to share the number to call tomorrow. Well, let's check on our local forecast on this Tuesday morning with meteorologist Mike Osterhage. Good morning, everyone. Fog is what we're really going to be dealing with this morning. It's pretty thick, especially the eastern half of our area. 61 degrees. We are from about 15, 20 degrees above normal right now. Plenty of humidity out there. Not much of a breeze, and so that's why we do have all this fog. And then it's going to be downright hot. We made it into the kind of mid-upper 60s yesterday. It's going to be mid 70s today and it's going to just get even hotter the next couple of days and we'll just keep all these cloudy skies, fog, mist, everything around here. The aquifer went up two tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading and mold is on the low side. Here's what it looks like when you uh, step outside right now as far as visibility down to a quarter mile up in New Braunfels, down to a mile now out there at the airport. Uh, third at Randolph, three quarters mile Stinson and a half mile it has dropped down at Pleasanton. Still some fog off to the west, but again, the thickest is to the east, and you can see right there where the fog is. Just cut the area in half, and that's where the dense fog advisory is up until 10 o'clock this morning. So it is going to be sticking around, obviously, all the way through the morning commute. Mist with the fog, and then we do have a, actually a couple of uh, sprinkly showers that are, in, <coughs> excuse me, being picked up on radar right now, well off to the east and down to the uh, southeast. Don't be surprised if there is a little bit of a sprinkle around the area today. Uh, it's not going to amount to much of anything at all. Just a kind of a little nuisance sprinkle here and there. So warm fog sprinkle this morning and cloudy sprinkles warm. Just move the words around and still going to 
be the same thing throughout the rest of today as well as the next few days. More of the same morning fog, mist, drizzle, a couple of sprinkles, uh, maybe even a few just regular showers by Thursday and Friday. Then early Saturday morning is when the cold front moves through here. Big change over the weekend. Much, much cooler temperatures. Downright cold only in the low 50s for high temperatures throughout the day and some decent rain chances this weekend. That will be a very welcome sight. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, we're taking a look at Transguide and we're definitely seeing some of that fog in a lot of these shots here, but thankfully we, it's not really presented any issues or for drivers at this hour, but nonetheless, make sure you're driving using those low beams. Let's take a quick look around town. There's I-10 and Hackberry. A few folks out there this morning, 35 at Evans. We're seeing a little bit of fog out there as well, uh, but right now, as I mentioned, we're not seeing any big issues. That's going to cause any delays for that early morning drive. Taking you right to the map, we do have a crash show that popped up off Loop 4 10 southbound at I-35. Uh, not seen anything, any activity out there yet. The cameras of uh, Transguide cameras, that is, don't point that far. So nonetheless, drive carefully through that area. But as you see right here, based off this map, the lanes are still much pretty open. So let's take a jump over here, though. We do have a stall detected off I-10 eastbound at I-37, not causing any issues as well. But anytime that you do see a stall vehicle out there, especially with foggy conditions, just make sure to move over or slow down. Let's take a wider look at the map because as you see, we're not spotting any big delay but taking you right to those inbound times. Thankfully, green across the board. Love to say that. I-10 coming in from to uh, Bernie, 25 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. 27 minutes coming in from 281 and Bulverde, and 26 minutes on 35 from New Braunfels. So as again, uh, we have not seen any issues out there other than that fog and a few folks out there this morning. If it stays quiet, we'll talk construction coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. New this morning, an argument turns violent on the northwest side overnight. Happened just before midnight on Wurzbach Road, right off of I-10. That's where police say two men began fighting. One of them pulled out a knife. The other man grabbed the knife, cutting his hand. He was treated on scene. The man who pulled the knife was arrested and could face assault charges. Now to the latest in the race for Judge Nelson Wolf's seat as Bear County Judge. The, the last night for those interested in running for office in 2022 to file and there are six prominent candidates vying for Wolf's current job. As Patty Santos reports, there's a lot of experience behind those candidates. Hi. Just minutes before the deadline, Bear County Precinct 3 Commissioner Trish DeBerry stepping into the county GOP headquarters to file for the county judge's seat, which will be left vacant by the departure of Judge Nelson Wolf. A lot of deliber deliberation regarding having to give up the seat, um, but you know, like I said, at the end of the day, I feel like I've accomplished great things in a year. She'll be facing off against Republican Nathan Buchanan, who lost his bid for Precinct 3 Constable in 2020. And the Democratic side, Judge Peter Sakai first announced his bid back in November. I want to bring my expertise, my leadership, my integrity, over to Commissioner's Court. State Representative Ina Minjares wants to serve her community in a new role. I've been house trained. I, I say that in the way where I got to the Texas House of Representatives. Former mayoral candidate Gerard Ponce and former mayoral chief of staff Ivalis Mesa Gonzalez have also filed for the seat. Political science professor Andrew Sanders predicts the campaign will be heavy with talks about COVID-19 recovery and the concerns over our power grid and CPS energy. We have a number of quarrels right now over city annexation. That's going to be of concern to whoever succeeds Judge Wolf in that position. And that's also going to be important for the the county commissioners, whoever remains in or, or is elected to those positions at the end of next year. And that was Patty Santos reporting. Judge Nelson Wolf has 60 days to appoint an interim commissioner for Precinct 3. He says he will hold off on appointment for anyone immediately, but will consult with court members. You can read more about this story on KSAT.com. Just look for it on our homepage. And time now is 508 and about 61 degrees. After the break, we're talking about a unique blood program that is saving lives. And taking a look outside with live cam, very foggy out there. We're at 61 degrees. Be careful on the way out. We'll be checking in with Mike later in the newscast. Welcome back. It is 512. Now to a first of its kind blood sharing partnership that spans across state lines and it's already saving lives. The Blood Emergency Readiness Corps or Burke program was started in September with seven core members, including the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. So here's how it works. Each center is on a rotating schedule where they commit to collecting extra units of blood for a few weeks at a time. The program has been activated three times already. 
most recently in Kentucky following the tornadoes and also during the Michigan, Michigan school shooting where four students died and several others were hurt. The first seven centers were across five states, but now in November we have 22 centers across 32 states already. Almost 100 units in total are available to send to a disaster should one occur now. And Burke doesn't have an impact on our local blood supply. It's blood that's set aside specifically for the program. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is looking for organizations or sponsors to host Burke blood drives in order to keep this program around and successful. Time check now, 513, about 61 degrees. And Apple's latest software update will include a new child safety feature. Details next in your Morning Tech Bites. Lisa here has had many jobs. She's worked in retail during the holidays, as a barista during rush hour, and a nanny to a couple of rambunctious kids. Now, all that experience has led her to a job that feels like home. With Home Instead, you too can become a caregiver to older adults with a career that makes a difference. Apply today. Cough, cough, sneeze, sneeze. <laughs> needs. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold Relief dissolves quickly, instantly ready to start working. So you can bounce back fast with Alka-Seltzer Plus. Now available for fast sinus relief. For asthma, there's primatine mist. When symptoms strike, your airways narrow and there's less breathing room. Primatine mist is clinically shown to open airways quickly. Get the number one FDA approved over-the-counter asthma inhaler and breathe easy again. In today's Tech Bites, Apple is reportedly adding a new feature aimed at protecting children. Bloomberg says the technology included with the new operating system will scan text messages for explicit images. Images not suitable for children will be blurred and the child will receive a warning before viewing. Adobe is out with new software designed to help users create graphics and animations. Creative Cloud Express lets users combine different audio and video elements and use effects to make the move. It's free, but a subscription level allows for more options. LG is rolling out two new television models next year. One is LG Stand By Me, a 27-inch battery-operated set that can be wheeled around on an adjustable stand. There's also the high-design OLED TV that leans against a wall instead of being mounted. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great Tuesday. Well, if you have to head out the door in the next few minutes, we want to give you an idea of how traffic's looking. Yeah, it looks pretty foggy, so let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, it's definitely a foggy morning out on the roadways, Mark and Stephanie. As you can see, 35 at St. Mary's. Traffic is picking up there. Let's take a closer look, though. See how the morning is shaping up around town there. We have a different shot of Transguide, and it does show that the morning commute is riddled with that fog. So, again, make sure that you're using those low beams if you plan on heading out the door in the next few moments. But quick look around town does show that traffic is picking up, but still early enough to where we're not seen a whole lot of problems out on the roadway. Let's go ahead and take you right to the map. Now we did have this crash located off Loop 410 southbound at I-35. Texas has since cleared that from their website, so not seen any issues there. So some good news, uh, but we still have some stalls to talk about because a new one just popped up here off Loop 410 southbound at South Cross Boulevard. So that could be the trend this early in the morning, but make sure you're checking those vehicles before you get out on the roadways. Taking a jump up here though to 35, we do have some construction going on around I-35 northbound at North Loop 1604. Now it looks like this construction should be wrapping up or has since wrapped up. I should say but uh, should essentially be finished uh, no later than tomorrow. So just watch out for that. Make sure that you plan those alternative routes if you have to travel through that area. But wider look at the map does show that it is still pretty much quiet out on the roadways. But of course, we're going to continue to watch the issues out there and give you all the information you need to know before you get on the roads. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Not exactly chilly out there this morning, Mike. No, but uh, grab a jacket. You know, when you have all this moisture in the atmosphere, it does tend to uh, conduct the heat away from your body. So it feels kind of, you know, kind of sneaks down the back of your neck. Also, fog, this picture has definitely gotten uh, blurrier and fog, the numbers are changing. Uh, by, you know, just in every couple of minutes almost down to half mile visibility now at the airport down to a quarter mile Randolph. Same thing up in New Braunfels, Bernie stage, a lot thicker fog. Same thing Stinson and Pleasanton. And this will definitely be like 
saying all morning long the issue all morning through uh, the rest of the morning commute. Eastern half of our viewing area has the thickest fog, but you're going to run into some spots out there to the west as well. Even Catula down to a mile and three quarters right now. And again, the dense fog advisory in effect up until 10 o'clock this morning. And there may be some stubborn fog even in behind that because we just keep continuing to get all this moisture pumped in here from the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Also, um, obviously with all this very thick fog and the low clouds, there is some mist out there. Roads are damp and we've got a couple of little light sprinkles that are showing up on radar right now. Just a couple of light showers. So most of those are going to be few and far between. Not really amounting to anything, but just don't be surprised if there is, say, a little um, sprinkle or two. So here's the uh, satellite picture and yeah, not much is uh, is changing and not much is going to be changing over the next couple of days. Got a huge low, another trough out here to the west of us. This is what's helping to pump in all the moisture aloft in the atmosphere from the Pacific Ocean. We get it down at the surface from the Gulf. And that's also, though, going to help pull the front through here, but not until Saturday. So between now and then, nothing really changes. We're going to be pretty well socked in. I doubt if we really see much, if any, sunshine at all for the next couple of days around here. A couple of sprinkly showers are possible. You know, one or two of them other than the morning fog and mist that we'll see again tomorrow. Now, Thursday, um, perhaps a couple of showers around here. There is a, a front which is going to try and lie in the area. May touch off a couple of more you know, a shower or two here and there Thursday, Friday. Then we get into early Saturday morning, and that's when the potent front's going to be moving on in here. That's what is going to be bringing in some pretty good rain, some of the best rain chances we've had in a long time. Temperatures will drop down throughout the day on Saturday. We will start off in the mid and upper 60s, right around the wee hours of the morning, and then also very windy conditions on Saturday. And it's just going to be one of those days where uh, it's just kind of good to stay inside. Wet, damp. Uh, cold and the temperatures will drop down to about 50 by the afternoon or maybe even lower than that and not much will change then overnight Sunday we start off with a couple of showers around here and then most of that should be getting out of here by late in the day on Sunday but between now and the end of the week again nothing changes 72 at noon cloudy a sprinkle or two again there could still be some stubborn fog left over dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock this morning and then later on today 75 high temperature and cloudy skies a sprinkle or two is possible if there's a peak of sunshine Great, but I really don't see anything. I think the clouds are just going to hang in here tough all week long and uh, wet, damp. Then it's going to be cold, chilly over the weekend, especially Saturday, and we'll see the rain come to an end on Sunday. Temperatures only in the low 50s. There's one school of thought that when it's this cloudy for days and days, we need at least some rain, so it looks like that might work at some point. It, it is nice other than because, you know, what's out there right now is just this nuisance kind of stuff mm -hmm. there. It makes driving kind of tough, but yeah, this is the best chance of rain we've had here in a long time. And we need it. Mm-hmm. All right, thank you, Mike. 522, about 61 degrees. And just ahead, a bass guitar played by Paul McCartney has just been auctioned off. We're keeping an eye on the latest headlines from the world of entertainment. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, seven, two, seven, Fireball three. Daily four, number six, one, six, six, Fireball one. Cash five, seven, 10, 13, 30, 32. Your Texas two step, one, four, 24, 28, bonus ball 25. And your Powerball numbers, 10, 30, 37, 53, 59, Powerball 4, Power Play 2. Good luck. A bass guitar played by Paul McCartney during his Wings days was just auctioned off for more than $470,000, the most ever paid at auction for a bass guitar. And a Telecaster smashed by Eddie Vedder smashed the auction record for a smashed guitar, selling for more than $266,000. The guitars were part of an auction that raised over $2 million for the charity Music Rising, which aids the Gulf Coast's music community. If you go with him, no one will ever forgive you. The critics have spoken and they're loving West Side Story and Belfast. Both films lead the pack of nominees for next month's Critics' Choice Awards with 11 nominations each. Dune and the Power of the Dog were right behind them with 10 nominations well, each. 
This is the team that's going to take down the most dangerous wizard in over a century. The first full trailer for Fantastic Beasts The Secrets of Dumbledore just dropped and is giving fans a peek at the team young Dumbledore has assembled to bring down the evil wizard Grindelwald. The Harry Potter spin-off is set to hit theaters in April. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. SAPD's Blue Santa is back this year. They're looking to give thousands of kids presents. We stopped by Blue Santa Warehouse yesterday to see how operations are going. The San Antonio Police Officers Association has a goal of reaching more than 7,000 kids this year. You can drop off donate toy donations at any police substation, or you can uh, leave a cash donation online. We have a link at ksat.com. This is the sixth year for the event. I believe they've registered all the families that they can give gifts I to. Think so as now it's well. just a matter of collecting those last minute gifts here in the run up to Christmas itself. A big thank you to all the volunteers. Absolutely. 527, about 61 degrees. And ahead in our next half hour, San Antonio police are investigating an early morning shooting. Katrina Weber is standing by with a live report. A run-in with a car burglar has left a homeowner hurting. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say he was shot while trying to protect his property. I'll tell you more about it. And taking a look outside with live cam, it is foggy out there. Be careful when you head out on the roadways. We're at 51 degrees. Again, it's like we copy and pasted a couple of days from last week all yes. over again. <laughs> 530, good morning everybody. It is Tuesday, December 14th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a great Monday. The weather was, you know, pretty tolerable. And then today, very foggy. So, yeah, again, be careful. And mild temperatures to start out our day. Here's Mike. Yeah, we stayed, uh, well, we actually did get up into the mid-60s yesterday, but we've pretty much stayed almost steady overnight. We're only in the uh, low 60s right now, and that's because of the surge of moisture that's moved on in here. And as that moisture continued to come on in, it has resulted in this lot of fog out there. And temperature right now is at 61. The dew point temperature measure moisture in the atmosphere running neck and neck. So therefore we've got relative humidities that are well up in the upper 90s. No wind to deal with. And those are a couple of the prime ingredients to give us all of this fog. And visibility is at a half mile at the airport. It's now dropped to a quarter mile Bernie stage. Same thing, New Braunfels, Randolph, Stinson, and Pleasanton are both at three quarters of a mile. And it's even dropped down a little bit around Kerrville. Castorville also has some fog. Heading out to the west, there is some, but the majority Majority of it, eastern half of our area this morning, and that's where the dense fog advisory again remains in effect up until 10 o'clock. And there's a lot of mist. The roads are obviously damp out there. And then we do have just a couple of uh, actual showers that are showing up on radar well down to the southeast. One or two of them, it's not going to amount to anything. Um, don't be surprised if there is a, a couple of showers or even a sprinkle around later on this afternoon. But again, it's not really going to uh, amount to anything. Better rain is going to be coming later on in the forecast. Mold is on the low side. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out to just after about 7 o'clock this morning. 72 at noon, 75 for a high temperature. So this morning we're starting off about 15 to 20 degrees above normal. Normal lows are in the low 40s and normal high temperatures are right around, say, mid 70s. So we're 10 and then going to be about 15 degrees above normal throughout the rest of the week. Not much is going to be changing at all the rest of the work week. Big front, though, comes through late to Friday, early on Saturday. Whole different story for the weekend, like I said, including some decent rain. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything big going on, sir? Well, Mike, that fog is no joke today. Check out this shot from 35 at Eisenhower. Tra Traffic picking up, but the shot is showing us uh, it's pretty difficult to see exactly uh, what's going on out there. Obviously, the cars are moving pretty nice and easily at this hour, but whenever we see conditions like this, make sure that you drive with caution, take it easy out on the road, and make sure to use those low beams. Now, let's go ahead and take you right to the map because we do have that stall that we mentioned off Loop 410 southbound at South Cross Boulevard. As of right now, that is the only issue we've spotted on the roadways, but check out where that, where that stall is located. According to our road weather map, it's where all that fog is being detected. Uh, you see all that orange detected off of I-10 going up to 35 in New Braunfels. So again, make sure that you are driving carefully through these areas. We're going to continue to watch that throughout the morning. Uh, but as far as the inbound times, if you are going to be traveling into the San Antonio area, maybe in the next few moments, it, we're not seeing any big issues right now. If you are coming in from Seguin, still pretty green on I-10 with 28 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area, 21 minutes coming in from Lavernia and 87 and 29 from 37 and Floridasville. So not too bad at this hour, but that can only change when more people start to get out on the roadways. One last look at 35 at Eisenhower. Again, make sure to take it easy out on the roadways. We'll talk gas prices coming up in the next few minutes. Stephanie.
Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a group of car burglars not only shot and wounded a man, but they also killed his Christmas spirit. It happened after he caught someone breaking into a truck outside his home in the 500 block of Monticello Court. That's near East South Cross. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, we understand the man had been doing some holiday decorating just before this happened. Well, that's right. Police tell me that the man had just put up all those Christmas lights you see there. He says as he was putting away his ladder, he heard the sound of someone breaking into his pickup, that truck right there in the driveway. Now that soon would be followed by another sound, the sound of gunshots ringing out, fired at that man. One bullet hit him in the back of his leg. Police say that homeowner who's in his 30s had confronted the burglar who was breaking into his pickup just before three this morning. They say the crook then called to someone in a waiting car, telling them to shoot the homeowner. The victim tried to run but was hit by a bullet. And police say he refused medical treatment here at the scene but later did go to a hospital on his own. They say he should be okay. Now, officers have been out here ever since, first looking for those burglars and then also just keeping an eye on this area. They say they want to put the man's wife at ease, but also make sure there's no further trouble here. Reporting live on the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Topping your morning headlines, the House is expected to vote on whether to hold former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows in contempt of Congress. This comes after Matic revelations last night showing uh, last night's meeting rather of the House Select Committee on the January 6th attack. CNN's Britt Conway has more from committee members and Meadows himself. Those in favor say aye. 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 A unanimous vote from the committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Recommending former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows be charged with contempt of Congress. This vote relates principally to Mr. Meadows' refusal to testify about text messages and other communications. Texts the committee says serve as evidence of former President Donald Trump's, quote, supreme dereliction of duty. Some of the texts that have been released were sent to Meadows the day of the attack. We are under siege here at the Capitol. The president needs to stop this ASAP. Mark, protesters are literally storming the Capitol, breaking windows on doors, rushing in. Is Trump going to say something? We are all helpless. There were also texts from Donald Trump Jr. He's got to condemn this ASAP. The Capitol Police tweet is not enough. Meadows responded, I'm pushing it hard. I agree. The texts were part of new information released by the committee that includes details about Meadows' actions before and during the January 6th attack, as well as his apparent role in attempts to overturn the 2020 election. We cannot be satisfied with incomplete answers or half-truths, and we cannot surrender to President Trump's efforts to hide what happened. Meadows calls the contempt recommendation disappointing, but not surprising. This is about Donald Trump and about actually going after him once again. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The parents of a Michigan teen charged with killing four students at his high school are scheduled to be back in court today. James and Jennifer Crumbly are facing charges of involuntary manslaughter. A hearing for their son who is charged as an adult in the shooting has been postponed to January 7th to allow prosecutors more time to examine evidence before sharing it with the defense. Four students were killed in the shooting. Another seven were hurt. In Indonesia, a tsunami alert has been lifted following a 7.3 magnitude undersea earthquake. It sparked panic in a region prone to deadly quakes and people could be seen scrambling out of buildings. One person was reported injured and a school was damaged. Back here at home, time check on your Tuesday morning, 538, still about 61 degrees. And just ahead, COVID and kids, what health officials are now saying about the long-term impact it could have on them. We know it's foggy out there, but do you need an umbrella today? We'll check back in with Mike Ostrich coming up. Hard to see much of anything outside right now with this particular live cam. And the move is on to get kids as young as five years old vaccinated against COVID-19. The rush is in response to an increasing number of children getting COVID, but then experiencing inflammation throughout their bodies. Ursula Perry shows us it can impact kids for months, possibly even years. My head started hurting and my stomach started hurting. He woke up in the middle of the night that night and was wheezing. Jackson was suffering from an after effect of COVID in kids called multi-system inflammatory syndrome or MIS-C for short. I see kids with MIS-C 
And MASC, this post-inflammatory reaction to COVID is really just like nothing I've seen in my career before. Pediatric immunologist Megan Cooper says that many of her patients, like Jackson, didn't even know they had COVID until they started feeling the after effects of Miss C, causing inflammation in the heart, lungs, kidneys, brain, skin, eyes, and digestive organs. This is not the flu. This is not um, a bad cold. Symptoms include a high fever, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and vomiting. And all of a sudden, he would go from feeling okay to a super high fever, terrible headache, all within a matter of like five minutes. Jackson spent eight days in the hospital, which included a 10-hour IV infusion, followed by two weeks of steroids. Jackson's feeling better. Dr. Cooper says the best way to avoid Miss C is to avoid getting COVID. Get vaccinated, please. Black and Hispanic children are disproportionately affected by this, but doctors don't know why some kids get it and others don't, or even how long these symptoms will last. Usually a child will develop symptoms two to four weeks after they have COVID or were around someone who did. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. And time now, 543 and about 61 degrees. Well, some of our spurs are giving back in a big way this holiday season. That story just ahead. And welcome back. It's 545 today is a locals day at the San Antonio Zoo and right now at the zoo it's a winter wonderland so for just eight dollars you can enjoy a huge array of holiday lights and trees and of course you can also get your picture taken with Santa. The admission discount is good today between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. You can find more information over on our website at ksat.com. Check it out. Some of our Spurs helping others during the Christmas holidays. Spurs Ford Olympic gold medalist Keldon Johnson teaming up with Academy Sports and Outdoors yesterday, donating $10,000 on a surprise shopping spree for local families. Five lucky families received a $1,000 shopping spree at Academy. Got to pick out Christmas gifts like bikes, games, shoes, and other apparel. And Academy surprised the nonprofit Wish for Our Heroes with a $5,000 gift card for active duty military families and veterans this holiday season. It was great, you know, to see the kids smile and, you know, really get to go and pick whatever they wanted, you know, and, and, and smile and, you know, see the relief of their parents uh, was, was big for me, you know, and it, it made my day seeing them, seeing them happy. Next up for our Spurs tomorrow night, they will take on the Charlotte Hornets. It's a home game. Tip off 730 at the AT&T Center. Right now, the Spurs are 10 and 16 on the season. All right, go Spurs, go. And I love the holiday sweaters. They're Looking cool. good, right? Yeah, very good. And Even the Coyote. <laughs> good to see Keldon out there. And uh, congrats and thank you to Academy for jumping in in a big way in our community. Yeah, thanks so much. And going to today, a little foggy out there. So let's be careful out there and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Well, thankfully, Mark and Stephanie, we've not spotted any big issues that are going to cause any big delays at this hour, but it's still very early. Let's go ahead and take a look at Trans Guide because uh, here we have a shot of I-10 at UTSA. You can see traffic's moving through there. And uh, again, we've not spotted any issues, but let's get a quick look around town, see how things are shaping up at this hour. US 90 at 36, 281 at Winding, uh, Winding Ridge, uh, Winding Way, I should say. Uh, we are seeing traffic moving in a lot of these directions. So obviously we're inching closer to 6 a.m., which means more people will be out on the roadway. So what can they expect? Well, a stalled vehicle still detected out there. Loop 410 southbound at South Cross Boulevard. That has been there throughout the morning, uh, but where it's located is where our road weather map is detecting a lot of that fog. As you can see, whenever we see that orange color, that does mean that fog is present in that area. So we'll continue to watch those roads closely. But another thing that we've been keeping an eye on is those gas prices. Let's go ahead and take you to what AAA is reporting right now. Uh, as of right now, AAA does report the average gas price in Bear County is 269. Around the state, we're looking at 290, and around the country is 332. Now, a AAA spokesperson does say that this is due to a decrease in demand and also a dip in those oil prices. But of course, that's something that we're going to continue to watch. So this is a little bit less than what we've been seeing throughout the year, but that can always change, especially when that demand does go up, especially with the demand of oil prices as well. So let's take one last look at 281 at Grayson. Traffic is moving and thankfully it has been light throughout the morning. Keeping our fingers crossed, guys. All right. That's good news. Always good news. Thank so you, Stephen. <laughs>
this picture is not going to change anytime <laughs> soon. No, okay. got a lot of Even fog. Past sunrise. Yeah, it, it'll okay. stick around through uh, through the rest of the morning commute. Move the camera around, and it's out there at the airport now, looking off to the east. And obviously, that didn't uh, improve by just switching view from west to east. Bernie stage uh, quarter mile visibility. It has gone up slightly at the airport. And Port SA is now at just over a mile. Stinson, Pleasanton is uh, up to a mile right now. Quarter mile at uh, New Braunfels. So pretty much you know western half and actually Kerrville has dropped down somewhat as well better uh, conditions out there to the west more fog off to the east obviously we keep saying that's where the uh, dense fog advisory is it does not include um, say into Kerrville where there is some fairly thick fog so just because you're not under the dense fog advisory obviously doesn't mean you won't be seeing or are not seeing fog same thing down around Catula this morning you're seeing some pretty good fog around there and radar if we still see some of these a uh, couple of showers out uh, one or two of the showers are going to be hanging around here primarily off to the east later on today if you get a couple of sprinkles which is a possibility. Just don't be surprised at it, but it's not going to be, you know, really amounting to anything. And as far as an umbrella, uh, it's not, I don't know if it's going to be that heavy. You might want to just kind of throw one in just preparing for what's to come this weekend. Temperature right now is at 61, 59 at Randolph. Very warm, very consistent readings thanks to the cloud cover, thanks to the humidity. And again, these numbers are about oh, almost 20 degrees above where we should be. Normal low temperatures at this time of year. And the dew points remain extremely high as well. And so that's what we're getting or why we're getting some of this fog because we have very high relative humidity, hardly any a breeze out there. And here's what's going on in the atmosphere. Upstairs, there's the flow coming in from the southwest, and that's all that moisture being pumped in here from the Pacific Ocean. Then down here at the surface, we've got the moisture coming in here from the Gulf of Mexico. So all this is kind of converging right on top of us. The humidity is going to remain very high over the next couple of days or even get higher. So nothing is really going to be changing. We'll have fog and mist, a couple of sprinkles around tomorrow as well. Even warmer temperatures the next couple of days. And then we'll finally get a front moving on through here. So we still have that big southwesterly flow. And that's where you saw in the water vapor imagery, all the moisture being pumped on in here. That low is going to try and work its way in through here. But notice how the upper level wind lines don't really drop drop down from the north. We do have somewhat of a front moving on through here, actually a pretty potent front coming in here by Saturday, early Saturday. But again, these upper level wind lines don't come straight out of Canada, so it's a very shallow layer of cold air. It will get pretty cold around here. We'll still have a lot of overrunning with this uh, upper flow coming in from the southwest. So what that means is still cloudy conditions. Very cold temperatures down here at the surface and some rain on Saturday. So good situation setting up as far as rain is concerned by Saturday. 72 degrees at uh, noon today. Cloudy skies and again a sprinkle or two here or there. One or two of them. 75 for high temperature. It's going to get even warmer the next couple of days. We'll still be dealing with morning fog, mist, a couple of showers here and there. Maybe a slightly better chance for a few showers uh, Thursday, Friday. Best chance of rain and it's a pretty good shot at rain. Saturday temperatures will drop throughout the day. We'll only be in the low 50s or even upper 40s by Saturday afternoon. Very windy on Saturday and uh, yeah, good day to just kind of hunker down inside. Sunday, a couple leftover showers, especially in the morning. Still cool. We're OK with that plan, Mike. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think this is going to be a great weekend just to kind of sit inside and enjoy right. it. Yeah, uh, the weird thing is, is I don't know if Steph has enough room on her couch for all three of us, but we'll, we'll, <laughs> come we'll on over and help, help me wrap presents. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good plan. Yeah. OK. All right. 552 about 61 degrees and just ahead the Wolf of Wall Street joins four movies in this week's big new home video releases that's next in your morning spotlight news. All in. Oscar Isaac and Tiffany Haddish star in The Card Counter. The thriller about a military interrogator turned gambler saw limited theatrical release and is now available on Blu-ray and DVD. Eager to escape a bright future on the Great Plains, Arthur Howitzer Jr. transformed the series of travelogue columns into The French Dispatch. Wes Anderson's The French Dispatch is out now on digital platforms. The anthology comedy features an ensemble cast that includes Bill Murray, Francis McDormand, and Timothy Chalamet. I say before all of you, I spoke the truth. 
Sir Ridley Scott's The Last Duel arrives on 4K UHD, Blu-ray, and DVD. The historical drama stars Jodie Comer, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, and Adam Driver. Is that a burnt orange 1993 station wagon? Or is it? Ah, who are these unstoppable warriors? We're the Mitchells, the only people who can save the world. The Mitchells vs. the Machines finds an awkwardly dysfunctional family teaming up to stop a robot apocalypse. The animated adventure invades digital platforms along with DVD and Blu-ray. I'm, I'm good with water for now, though. Thank you. It's his first day on Wall Street. Give him time. Based on a true story, Martin Scorsese's 2013 hit The Wolf of Wall Street gets a promotion with its new 4K Ultra HD release. Binge watching in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 110. That's how many years in prison a Colorado truck driver has been sentenced to following the death of four people in a multi-vehicle pileup. We have details on our next hour of GMSA. Plus one teenage Willy Wonka is taking the candy industry by storm and has some sweet advice for grade schoolers who'd like to start their own business one day. And while the latest in an overnight shooting on San Antonio South Side, we're told there could be as many as three suspects still on the run right now. And we'll update you on traffic and weather coming up right here on GMSA. The cleanup continues here in Mayfield after a series of deadly tornadoes rips through the area. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Mayfield, Kentucky. Coming up, a look at how some residents survived the storm. The Omicron variant is now in Bear County. We'll tell you what else you need to know. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. Boy, it's foggy out there. We're at 61 degrees, but a little more mild as far as the temperatures go. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, December 14th. A little closer to Christmas. Yeah. Thanks for being with us this morning. If you have to head outside on those roadways, be careful. Very, very foggy. We had some foggy days last week, and it's kind of a repeat recipe this morning. Mike is here with more on that. And my question for him about an hour, an hour and a half ago was, could we see any sprinkles this morning? Yeah, I mean, there are a couple of sprinkles out there, some mist mm -hmm. associated with some of the fog. There are a few uh, showing up on radar. If you want to grab an umbrella, fine. It's not really going to mount anything. Now, the rain is going to be coming in here. The rain we're looking forward to is going to be on Saturday. So, yes, if you are heading out, uh, that's the day when you definitely need an umbrella. This morning, grab a jacket, even though we are 20 degrees above normal, just because it's kind of that, that damp chill out there with all the humidity. Visibility, Kerrville has dropped down to just a quarter mile right now. Same thing, Bernie Stage. Um, a lot of thick fog in and around town. Up in New Braunfels, not bad further out to the west, but the eastern half of our area is where the thickest fog is, and that's where the dense fog advisory is. Now, again, even though there's not an advisory, such as the case in Kerrville, obviously you got a lot of very thick fog out there. And then we were talking about some of the sprinkles. Yeah, there are a couple of uh, little showers that are showing up on radar. I mean, this is just kind of a, a gee whiz thing at best because it's not amounting to anything. Um, making the roads kind of damp, and that's what we're going to be dealing with in and around town as well, just because of all the, the mist associated with some of that fog. Mold is on the low side, and temperatures aren't going to be going anywhere this morning, staying very steady because of the cloud cover, because of the fog. And we'll see a bit of a wind later on today. Wind out of the south at 10, maybe 20 miles per hour. Make it up into the low 70s today at noon, and then top off at 75 degrees. So we start off 20 above normal. We'll finish up about 10 above normal later on today. And then over the next couple of days, it's going to get even even warmer. That's the only thing that's really going to be changing is we add to the high temperatures as well as low temperatures. Still going to have plenty of uh, clouds, fog in the morning, mist, drizzle, a couple of showers later on in the week. Then big changes come in here just in time for the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Fog causing problems out there? Not yet, Mike. And again, we're keeping our fingers crossed here in the traffic lab. You know, this fog may not be for every driver out there, uh, but thankfully it's not creating any issues out there as of yet. As you can see, it's very much present in a lot of these shots from Transguide. Check out Luke Portana, Ray Ellison. Hard to make out what's going on out there. However, Luke Portana, San Pedro, we have a little bit of a clearer shot there at Luke Portana, at Jackson Keller. Traffic is getting moving now. Although the roads are pretty much wide open right now, that doesn't mean to just get out there and, and drive 
drive uh, super fast. Again, you want to take it slow whenever you have conditions like this outside. Let's take you right to the map because what we have are still some of those stalls that we talked about earlier. Loop 410 South on a South Cross Boulevard. That's been a pesky issue throughout the morning, but thankfully not causing any problems when it comes to traffic delays. Let's take a jump up over here because we have a stall that was detected off I-35 southbound at Eisenhower Road. Uh, as we take a wider look at the map, those stalls are detected where we're seeing a lot of that fog. As you can see from this road weather map, it looks like we have more of that coming in. So for drivers that are heading out in the next few minutes, make sure that you are taking it easy and try not to rush uh, if you have to head somewhere pretty soon. But if you are traveling into San Antonio from any of our neighboring communities, the good news is you're not going to find any problems driving to the downtown San Antonio area. 27 minutes from 37 and Pleasanton 17 from Lytle uh, is just not not too bad. Uh, and Highway 90, we're looking at just 19 minutes at this hour. Let's take one last look around town. 37 at Salado Creek. Traffic is getting moving. Make sure to keep your eyes on the roadways. Guys. San Antonio police say a homeowner trying to stop one crime has become the victim of another. He was shot after interrupting a car burglary. It happened in the 500 block of Monticello Court near East South Cross. Katrina Weber has that story from the scene and tells us that police will be making their presence known there for quite a while. The police tell us they are going to be keeping an eye on this home and on the area after what happened earlier this morning. That homeowner in the hospital, his wife, according to police, very worried after what happened here about three o'clock this morning. Police say that that homeowner had just finished putting up Christmas decorations outside his home. He was putting his ladder away when he heard a noise up front, came out and found someone getting into his truck here in the driveway in the 500 block of Monticello Court. The police say that that burglar did get some items out of the truck and then called to his friends who were in a waiting car telling them to shoot the homeowner. The homeowner heard what happened, tried to run away and was hit in the back of the leg, according to police. He did go to a hospital on his own with a non life threatening gunshot wound. And again, police now watching. They've been searching the area for those suspects, but say they don't have a very good description of them at this point, but they are going to keep an eye on this area throughout the day uh, just in case there is any more trouble here. Reporting from the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police also investigating a deadly shooting on the east side. This happened last night just before 8 p.m. on Crockett at Geavers. Police say the two men involved were at a drug deal when shots were fired. One man was found dead inside a vehicle. The other shot in a nearby lot. He was rushed to the hospital with life threatening injuries. Two cases of the coronavirus Omicron variant have been confirmed in Bear County. A local health expert says the variant could have been here as early as November. And so far, Omicron's impact is not as severe as Delta. However, everyone should still take precautions and be mindful of how many people you plan to have over during the holidays. And according to Metro Health, one in three people in San Antonio are still not fully vaccinated. The Alamo Dome drive through clinic is open from noon to 8 p.m. Wednesday through Friday for anyone looking to get their vaccine, whether it be their initial dose or their booster. Right now on KSET.com, we have a full list of vaccination sites. Believe it or not, it has been one year since the first Americans received FDA authorized COVID-19 vaccines. The vaccine anniversary comes as the U.S. passes 50 million COVID-19 cases. About 800,000 have died as a result of the virus. Roughly 60% of all Americans are vaccinated against coronavirus. And it's day four of cleanup and recovery in Mayfield, Kentucky, after a swarm of tornadoes devastated the region over the weekend. Now harrowing stories of survival are surfacing as those who've been rescued are now speaking out. All this as the death toll from the storms continues to rise. ABC's Ika Jachi is in Mayfield with more. Good morning. Every day here on the ground reveals a new story of hope and despair and the resilience of this community. This morning, homeowner Marty Janes considers himself fortunate. It happened so fast. I mean, the glass was flying and then, then the roof come down and the walls are caving in. And His Mayfield home in shambles. Hell, like a war zone, un, 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 unimaginable. There have been at least 44 reported tornadoes across nine states, resulting in the deadliest tornado outbreak in the U.S. in more than a decade. Kentucky Governor Andy Beshear says over a thousand homes have been destroyed from the storms. The death toll in his state rising to at least 74, with 88 lives lost across five states. As I look at this broken down by county, it's way more. 
way more people unaccounted for than this. We expect that this death toll will continue to grow. Back here in Mayfield, I was trying to get to my wife. Marty James recalling the moment he thought he lost his partner. She was trapped in there. Once they made it out, James's wife was rushed to the hospital with two broken legs, battered and beaten. The two eventually reunited alive. I don't wish this on anybody ever. Unbelievable. And President Biden, who's been in regular contact with Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, says he'll survey the damage here in Kentucky tomorrow. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Mayfield, Kentucky. Back here at home in South Texas, we're helping those impacted by those tornadoes. Our KSAT community partners, along with the American Red Cross, will be hosting a phone bank tomorrow from noon through 7 p.m. Keep it right here on KSAT and KSAT.com for more information on how you can donate. We're going to share the number to call tomorrow. And now to major new developments from the investigation into January's attack on the U.S. Capitol. During a vote last night on whether to hold former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows in contempt of Congress, lawmakers investigating the attacks revealed text messages sent to Meadows by former President Trump's son, as well as messages sent by various Fox News personalities. ABC's Andrew Dembert has the details. This morning, newly revealed text messages show former President Trump's closest allies wanted him to take action on January 6th as rioters were storming the Capitol. Congresswoman Liz Cheney quoting this text message sent to then Chief of Staff Mark Meadows from Donald Trump Jr. He's got to condemn this <laughs> Meadows responded, quote, I'm pushing it hard. I agree. Donald Trump Jr. texted again and again urging action by the president. And as rioters stormed the Capitol, Fox News hosts sent these messages to Meadows. Quote, Mark, the president needs to tell people in the Capitol to go home. This is hurting all of us. He is destroying his legacy, Laura Ingram wrote. Quote, can he make a statement? Ask people to leave the Capitol, Sean Hannity urged. The texts were revealed last night as the House committee investigating the riot voted to hold Meadows in contempt of Congress. He's refusing to testify, even though he provided the messages to the committee. The hearing was not carried live on Fox News, and the channel did not immediately respond to requests for comment about the text messages. Congressman Adam Schiff also read a text message sent to Mark Meadows the day after the riot. We tried everything we could in our objection to the six states. I'm sorry nothing worked. The day after a failed attempt to stop the peaceful transfer of power through violence, an elected lawmaker tells the White House chief of staff, I'm sorry nothing worked. That is chilling. The full House could vote as early as today on whether to ask the Justice Department to prosecute Meadows for contempt of Congress. In a separate development, organizers of the January 6th rally near the White House are suing Verizon, trying to prevent the company from sharing phone data with the House committee. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And time now at 6.11 and about 61 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, a major car manufacturer making a new push for electric vehicles. We'll tell you when those vehicles might roll out. And also just ahead, we're going to tell you about Apple's new feature aimed at protecting your kids. Outside with live cam that don't necessarily need a jacket this morning. I mean, it's a bit on the cool side, but uh, fog and mist are the other problem for some folks in our area right now. Taking a live look over there off Loop 410. We're going to circle back and check in with Stephen and Mike coming up. And welcome back at 615. Apple is reportedly adding a new feature aimed at protecting children. Bloomberg says the technology included with the new operating system will scan text messages for explicit images and images not suitable for children will be blurred and the child will receive a warning before viewing. All right, everybody take a deep breath. So far, so good for holiday deliveries. Analytics firm Ship Matrix says both the post office and UPS improved on time deliveries in the first major test of the season. The two weeks after Thanksgiving, FedEx, however, is posting a drop in on-time performance compared to last year. And Toyota is shifting gears and now says it is stepping up its commitment to electric vehicles. After saying it would have 15 models powered by batteries by 2025, the car maker now says it will have 30 electric models available by 2030. Doubling down. All right, let's check on traffic back here at home. 
Hey, thank you so much, Mark Stephanie. Taking a look right now at Trans Guide. We are seeing uh, right now 90 West at Zaza Mora. Now let's take a closer look here because right before we went to commercial break, there were some flashing lights out there. Talk to our friends over at Trans Guide. Now they do tell us that first responders were moving a crash scene off of the highway. This is near General Hudnell Road, so watch out for that crash. But you can see right now traffic is already starting to pick up in that area. So let's go ahead and take you right to the map, show you where that's located because that is there off US 90 westbound at Zaza Mora according to TxDOT. So again, drive carefully through that area, but the main issue we've been seeing throughout the morning are those pesky stalls. So this one we've talked about for quite a while now. Uh, Loop 410 southbound at South Cross Boulevard, according to TxDOT, that stall still detected out there. So watch out for that driver. I'm thinking at this point that could be an abandoned vehicle, but either which way, watch out for that. Taking a jump up there to 35, we still have that stall off I-35 southbound at Eisenhower Road, but thankfully it's not causing any issues. But when we look at the wider scope of the map, we still have a lot of that fog according to this road weather map that we're seeing. All that orange does mean that you want to be drive carefully through that these roadways and make sure that you use the low beams this morning. Let's get one last look at US 90 at Zazamoto. Traffic is picking up, Mike, but it's not been looking too great out there. Oh no, it, it looks, although some pictures, it looks a little bit better. Some of those trans guide cameras, it is not, you know, pea soup everywhere. Uh, just watch out though, because you can turn the corner and run into some very thick fog because uh, in some places it is almost pea soup fog. 60 this morning, pretty much temperature right now is where it's going to be staying. Yeah, number wise, it's not that cold, but with all this humidity out there, it's almost kind of a damp chill. Some of that moisture in the air always makes it feel a little bit cooler. So you want to grab a jacket fog some sprinkles, uh, some mist out there, and then cloudy skies. I really doubt if we see any sunshine today. If there, if there is some, fantastic, but 75 degrees, very warm, and don't be surprised if there is a, a sprinkle or two even this afternoon. This picture actually looks like it has gotten slightly better looking off to the east. We can see the cars a little bit further off into the distance. Obviously, there's still plenty of fog around here. Visibility is a half mile at the airport. It has come up a little bit there at Port SA. Same thing, Randolph. Stinson, New Braunfels, still a quarter mile. Same thing at uh, Kerrville and two miles now, Pleasanton. But then again, west eastern half of our area, thick fog, western half, not bad, but then go out toward Ozona and fog really uh, thickens up quite a bit. And this is going to continue on. It's going to be changing, going back and forth like it has been so far this morning. Dense fog advisory, eastern half of our area up until 10 o'clock. So it will definitely be sticking around. And there are still these couple of sprinkle these showers off to the uh, east just heavy enough to be detected on radar and there some mist out there. Don't be surprised if there is one or two uh, showers around the area later on this afternoon. A lot of clouds hanging around here. The flow coming in here at the surface from the uh, Gulf of Mexico. And then we've got this big low out there just off the coast of California. And that is what is pumping in all the moisture upstairs in the atmosphere. And that's what's going to really kind of have an impact on the weather over the weekend. So we do have a front that's going to be moving on through here, um, but it's a very shallow layer of cold air and that big storm system off to the west will continue to pump all the moisture on top of it. So we'll have an overrunning situation, which uh, with a couple of disturbances moving on through here, and that's what's going to give us the rain chances over the weekend with some very chilly conditions. 72 degrees today at noon, cloudy. Again, a sprinkle or two is possible today, 75 for a high temperature. So we're starting off this morning almost 20 above normal. We finish up today about 10 above normal and then even warmer the next couple of days. Kind of knocking on the door of 80 degrees the next few days. Cloudy skies, uh, fog, mist, a shower or two around the area in the morning. A little bit better chance of a shower or two Thursday, Friday. And then cold front moves on through here. Temperatures drop throughout the day. Low 50s, upper 40s by the afternoon on Saturday. Uh, rain, good chance of rain, about a 60% chance. So we'll have cold air down here at the surface. All those gray skies, those you know steady showers here and there. Great day to stay in your pajamas on <laughs> Saturday. So we give the official blessing on that. So. A blessing of the pajamas. Yes. Yeah, take it. <laughs> People are going to say, Mike said I could stay in my jeans. <laughs> <laughs> eh, what the heck, you know? It's an, it's an order. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Right now we're at 620, about 61 degrees. The FBI investigating the death of a woman who fell overboard from the balcony of her stateroom on a cruise ship. That's ahead in your GMA First Look. This Essay Salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by Walk On Sports Bistro. Hi, I'm Chef Leonard Brown. I want to wish my cousin Devin Wilson a Merry Christmas. I appreciate your service. I love you.
If you're an adult newly diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer that's spread and tests positive for pd one without an abnormal EGFR or ALK gene, your first option could be a chemo-free combo that works differently. Opdivo plus Yervoy equals a chance for more nights to remember, more days to savor, a chance to live longer. Opdivo and Yervoy can cause your immune system to harm healthy parts of your body during and after treatment. These problems can be severe and lead to death. See your doctor right away if you have a cough, chest pain, shortness of breath, irregular heartbeat, diarrhea, constipation, severe stomach pain, nausea or vomiting, dizziness, fainting, eye problems, extreme tiredness, changes in appetite, thirst or urine, rash, itching, confusion, memory problems, muscle pain or weakness, joint pain, flushing or fever. These are not all the possible side effects. Problems can occur together and more often when Opdivo is used with Yervoy. Tell your doctor about all medical conditions, including including immune or nervous system problems if you've had or plan to have an organ or stem cell transplant or received chest radiation. A chance to live longer. Ask your doctor about a chemo-free combo of Devo plus Yervoy. In this morning's GMA First Look, cruise ship mystery. About 3 a.m., um, we were wakened by a, a general announcement across the ship with a warning going, man overboard, man overboard, man overboard. The FBI investigating a deadly mystery at sea. A woman falling overboard from this cruise ship in the middle of the night, 35 miles off the coast of Mexico. There's a lot of questions, you know, and a lot of questions not being answered. All I can tell you is this has been the cruise from hell. The woman in her 20s, who's not yet been identified, was traveling on the Carnival Miracle. The cruise line saying she fell early Saturday morning from the balcony of her stateroom. Passengers say they were told unreleased security footage from the ship captured her fall. I had a balcony, so I went outside and looked, and immediately they were throwing life preservers. They threw two of those out in the ocean. And we'll have much more on this unfolding mystery at sea coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. We have some breaking news from Haiti. Officials there saying dozens of people are dead after a gasoline truck exploded. And details are limited at this time, but we know at least 40 people were killed. We're going to bring you more information as it becomes available. And moving on to what's trending on KSET.com, the movie Selena has been added to National Film Registry. 25 movies were tapped for preservation this year. Some of the other big names include Star Wars, Return of the Jedi, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, and A Nightmare on Elm Street. The Library of Congress says this year's selection dates back nearly 120 years. The oldest is the Ringling Brothers Parade film in 1902. You can read more about all these movies on our website, again, at KSAT.com. 626, about 61 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you why crews are calling a fire at an east side restaurant suspicious. We're also tracking an overnight shooting down on the south side. Several suspects could still be on the run. Katrina Weber will join us with details. From Christmas lights to emergency lights, that's the change folks saw outside a Southeast Side home overnight. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say a man putting up Christmas decorations took a bullet when he interrupted a crime. I'll tell you more about it. Fog is an issue this morning. This camera is somewhat elevated, but we're looking down at traffic building on I-10. It's a very foggy start to our day for many parts of our viewing area. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 14th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, you might want a little bit of extra time when you head out the door, especially if you want to grab some coffee this morning, uh, but mild as far as the temperatures. That's right, and we're already looking ahead to next weekend. Are we still looking at an indoor kind of weekend, Mike Osterhage? Yes, it's going to be very chilly and it's going to be wet. A good chunk of the weekend. I think mm -hmm. we salvaged a little bit of uh, Sunday as far as the rain coming to an end, but Saturday is going to be one of those days where you just kind of want to hunker down. This picture, uh, which just a couple of minutes ago, you can see a little further. Now the fog seems to have uh, thickened up ever so slightly. We are at 61 degrees, about 20 above normal. And when these two numbers, temperature and dew point, are running neck and neck, you've got almost 100% humidity out there and light or no wind as the case is and a couple of the prime ingredients to get a lot of fog going on. Still a half mile visibility at the airport. It has been kind of going back and forth between a half mile and a quarter mile. Mile and a third at Port SA, half mile Stinson, uh, as well as Randolph, Pleasanton and Kerrville still at a quarter mile visibility. Same thing with New Braunfels and then further out toward Ozona. But most of our western counties aren't bad this morning with the exception of Kerrville.
The dense fog advisory is the eastern half of our area up until 10 o'clock this morning, so it is going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the morning commute and probably even a little bit stubborn even after that approaching late morning hours, maybe even in toward noon. There could still be a couple of patches of fog around here. There will still be plenty of clouds and we've got a couple little sprinkly showers. Some of those are dying off. Uh, don't be surprised if there is something other than just a little mist out there this morning or even this afternoon a sprinkle or two mold is on the low side updated counts going to be coming out in about the half hour 45 minutes or so so fog warm sprinkles 20 above normal about 10 above normal later on today again a sprinkle or two plenty of clouds this afternoon more of the same tomorrow as well as on thursday and friday even warmer temperatures though in the afternoon then we get the big front moving on through here and that's going to be early saturday morning wee hours of the morning temperatures will drop down throughout the day only about 50 or so by the afternoon it's going to be windy and those decent chances of rain coming in here by Saturday. And details just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, despite all this thick fog, doesn't seem like it's been too bad on the road. Yeah, you know, like uh, the issues have been pretty minor, but uh, as morning has gone on, more of those issues have popped up. Uh, let's first start off with a look at Trans Guide. Here's 37 at US 181. Very difficult to make out exactly where the roadway is. So, you know, the good indication there is that we see traffic that's moving a little bit through that area nice and smoothly, but thankfully nice and slow as well. So make sure that you use those lows beams this morning. But that has been the predominant issue throughout the morning is that nasty fog that we've been seeing out there for our drivers that are maybe going to get their morning started a little bit early with us. Let's take you to the map because we did have a crash off US 90 westbound at Zazamoto. Thankfully, that has been cleared off of the highway, so it's not going to cause any issues for drivers. But let's take a jump up over here because we are seeing a small slowdown there off Loop 1604 northbound at Kitty Hawk Road. It's nothing too major, but of course, as the morning does go on, we want to make sure drivers are prepared accordingly. Taking a jump over here, a new stall popping up off I-10 westbound at Vance Jackson Road, not causing problems. But as I mentioned, that has been the issue throughout the morning and so has that fog. So make sure you're driving carefully through that area. And as for our inbound times, green across the board. Now we're seeing some sort of issue on 281 with 28 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. We'll find out what's going on there. But as we take one last look here at Transguide, just make sure you keep those eyes on the road, guys. Thank you, Stephen. The search is on for three people involved in a car burglary and shooting outside a southeast side home. A man who lives in that home was wounded after trying to stop someone from stealing his pickup. It happened on Monticello Court near East South Cross. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters now. And Katrina, do police have any leads? No, they told me all that they know right now is there were three people involved and that they escaped in some sort of a red car. Now, those criminals left behind a man in his 30s wounded from a gunshot wound. Police say that victim had been putting up Christmas lights outside his home in the 500 block of Monticello Court. He told officers he was putting away his ladder when he heard someone breaking into his pickup. The police say after he confronted the burglar, he was shot in the back of his leg. Those shots fired by an accomplice who was in a waiting car. In all, though, police say there were three people involved in the burglary and shooting, and they all got away. The victim did go to a hospital on his own. The police are continuing to keep an eye on that house and the neighborhood of throughout the morning, they tell me, just in case something happens. They also want to keep the man's wife at ease uh, as they continue to look for these criminals. And police say they do plan to ask neighbors if they have any video so that they can get some clues about who was responsible for the car burglary and shooting. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, an argument turns violent on the northwest side overnight. Happened just before midnight on Wurzbach, right off of I-10. That's where police say two men began fighting. One of them pulled out a knife. The other man grabbed the knife, cutting his hand. He was treated on scene. The man who pulled the knife was arrested and could face assault charges. And crews are trying to figure out what sparked an overnight fire at an east side restaurant. It happened around 4.15 this morning at Poppy's Mexican Restaurant on East Houston Street, not far from the AT&T Center. Firefighters were able to knock out the flames quickly, but say there was a strong smell of accelerant when they got there. Right now, investigators are calling that fire suspicious. And now to another story we're following closely this morning. Two Omicron cases have been announced in Bear County. Sarah Costa joined us now in the studio with more details on that. Good morning.
Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. This is something local hospitals are going to be watching very closely. That's because Omicron will be competing with the Delta variant. Health officials say Omicron's impact is so far is not as severe as Delta, but everyone should still take precautions, especially those considered high risk. Dr. Brian Alsip, the chief medical officer at University Health, says those who have not been vaccinated are the most susceptible. Those who have not been vaccinated certainly are the most susceptible. You know, those who are older, those who have underlying medical conditions, those that have a compromised immune status, they're at higher risk. A booster is probably the best protection against this variant. Dr. Alsip also encourages people to keep wearing a mask and be mindful of how many people you plan to have over during the holidays. According to Metro Health, one in three people in San Antonio are still not fully vaccinated. The Alamo Dome drive through clinic is open from noon to 8, Wednesday to Friday for anyone looking for a vaccine, whether it be their initial dose or a booster. Right now on KSAT.com, we have that full list of vaccination sites. Mark and Steph. Sarah. The House is expected to vote on whether to hold former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows in contempt of Congress. This comes after dramatic revelations during last night's meeting of the House Select Committee on the January 6th attack. See it as Britt Conway has more from committee members and Meadows himself. Those in favor say aye. 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 A unanimous vote from the committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Recommending former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows be charged with contempt of Congress. This vote relates principally to Mr. Meadows' refusal to testify about text messages and other communications. Texts the committee says serve as evidence of former President Donald Trump's, quote, supreme dereliction of duty. Some of the texts that have been released were sent to Meadows the day of the attack. We are under siege here at the Capitol. The president needs to stop this ASAP. Mark, protesters are literally storming the Capitol, breaking windows on doors, rushing in. Is Trump going to say something? We are all helpless. There were also texts from Donald Trump Jr. He's got to condemn this ASAP. The Capitol Police tweet is not enough. Meadows responded, I'm pushing it hard. I agree. The texts were part of new information released by the committee that includes details about Meadows' actions before and during the January 6th attack, as well as his apparent role in attempts to overturn the 2020 election. We cannot be satisfied with incomplete answers or half-truths, and we cannot surrender to President Trump's efforts to hide what happened. Meadows calls the contempt recommendation disappointing, but not surprising. This is about Donald Trump and about actually going after him once again. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Today's expected Sorry. vote by the full House is the last step before sending the contempt referral to the Justice Department. Meadows is suing the committee and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to block the committee's subpoenas. You can look for the latest on this story coming up a little bit later on, less than an hour on Good Morning America, beginning at 7. A man who killed four people with a semi-truck is sentenced to 110 years in prison. Rogel Aguilera Maderos learned his fate in a Denver area courtroom on Monday in 2019. His truck slammed into a stop to traffic on an expressway. At some point, his brakes gave out, but prosecutors argue he made a series of poor decisions that ultimately led to the tragedy. Including excessive speed. Well, workers and volunteers, members of the National Guard spreading across tornado-damaged areas of Kentucky to assist with recovery efforts there. Crews replacing thousands of damaged utility poles and delivering bottles of drinking water to survivors. The tornado outbreak Friday into Saturday killed at least 88 people in five states. 74 of them were in Kentucky. Governor Andy Bashir said the death toll could still grow. Back here at home, we're helping those impacted by those storms. Our KSAT community partners, along with the Red Cross, will host a phone bank tomorrow, starting at noon, ending at 7 p.m. And you can keep it right here on KSAT and KSAT.com for more information on how you can donate. We're going to share the number to call tomorrow. SAPD's Blue Santa is back this year, and they're looking to give thousands of kids presents this year. We stopped by the Blue Santa warehouse yesterday to see how operations are going. The San Antonio Police Officers Association has a goal of reaching more than 7,000 kids this year. You can drop off toy donations at any police substation or send a cash donation online. We have a link at KSAT.com. Yeah, still time to donate, and we thank those volunteers. Time now, 640 and 61 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, one teenager's sweet advice for young entrepreneurs.
welcome back at 644. So believe it or not, tooth decay is the most common chronic childhood disease with candy and soda being two big culprits. But one company is combating that with an unlikely product and an equally unlikely CEO. RJ Marquez has details. My dad always told me, you know, you shouldn't have candy. Sugar is terrible for your teeth. But Alina Morse wasn't going to accept it. So I asked him, you know, why can't we make a healthy candy? And that's how Zollipop was born, a lollipop that cleans your teeth. Its inventor is the youngest CEO ever to grace the cover of Entrepreneur magazine. The idea came to Alina at seven years old. She cooked up concoctions, asked her dentist questions, and had friends sample them. Zollipops use a low-calorie sweetener called erythritol. It reduces the acid in your mouth that causes bacteria, which can break down enamel. She used $4,000 she saved from her past birthdays. Her dad matched it, and together they found a production facility and distributor. By nine years old, she got her first yes. 18 months later, she turned a profit. Now it's a multi-million dollar company. It's in many of the nation's largest retailers and in seven countries. And her number one tip for wannabe business owners, write it down. You support networks and social media groups, gather a team you trust, and ask a lot of questions. As adults, we kind of quit asking questions, but kids haven't tried things, and they have great questions, and listen, and, and explore those ideas with them. Her future mission is create, or as she says, zollify more products. It really is not only a, a successful company in my eyes, but also a company doing good. Her nonprofit, A Million Smiles, gives free candy to schools. 10% of all her sales go to support oral health education. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. And here at home, today is Locals Day at the San Antonio Zoo. And right now at the zoo, it's a winter wonderland. So just for $8, you can enjoy a huge array of holiday lights and trees. And of course, you can get your picture taken with Santa. The admission discount is good between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. today. You can find more information over on our website at KSET.com. Pretty good size of our audience is about to head out the door in about 15 minutes or so. Yeah, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Well, good morning, everybody. Thankfully, the roads have been pretty quiet despite that fog that we've been seeing throughout the morning. Let's go ahead and take a look at trans guys. See how traffic is moving now that we are at morning rush. You can see barely anything there of 35 at US 181, but traffic again moving through a lot of these shots. But that fog has obviously been present throughout the morning. So let's go ahead and take you to the map because the issues, as I mentioned, are a little minor right now. We have a slowdown here off Loop 410 northbound right around East Houston Street. You can see in this particular stretch of road, we're seeing traffic moving at just 18 miles per hour. So just be prepared for that. And we also have a slowdown still detected or saw, I should say, pardon me, off I-10 westbound Advanced Jackson Road. Thankfully, it's not causing any issues on the highway. But a wider look at the map does show that our road weather map, I should say, that we do have a lot of fog still out there. So again, make sure that you are using those low beams before you get out or while you're on the road, I should say. I-10 at Callahan, you can see that traffic Traffic is moving, so thankfully, though, it has been a quiet morning. But, guys, that could quickly change when morning rush uh, is already here. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Hi, Mike. What's up? Latest What's up? is this <laughs> is going to stick around. This is yes. going to stick around. Yeah, it's going to be pretty much this weather throughout the rest of the week. Nothing will really change, except it is actually going to be getting warmer in the morning as well as in the afternoons through Friday, then some big changes coming about. So uh, yeah, visibility still half mile out at the airport. It's dropped once again, Bernie stage, Stenson, Pleasanton, New Braunfels, and just a third of a mile at Randolph. Castorville has a lot of very thick fog. And then up there in Kerrville, further out to the west, it's not as bad. And once again, the dense fog advisory remains in effect. It has not changed the, the counties that have been included in this dense fog advisory. It has not changed, nothing's been added to it, but obviously go out in toward Castorville go out toward Kerrville. There is some very thick fog there, but this is uh, up until 10 o'clock this morning, which means it is going to be definitely on the stubborn side. And these few little showers that have been showing up, uh, one or two of them just uh, heading in toward Gonzales. I mean, that's not really amounting to anything, just heavy enough, if you will, to be picked up on radar. Other than that, there's some mist out there. The roads are definitely damp. 61 degrees. Uh, everybody's very consistent within uh, what two or three degrees temperatures all around the area and the dew points remain very high and they're going to stay high which means low temperatures will stay very mild low to mid 60s for the next few days then the front comes through here and that's going to knock the humidity on out now despite the fact though that we're going to be seeing the humidity get on out of here. We're still going to have plenty of clouds around because it's a very shallow layer of cold air that's moving on in. So we'll still have what we call an overrunning situation, which means we'll still have a lot of moisture coming in on top of that colder air that moves on in here. 
Again, cloudy skies pretty much all week long. A couple of sprinkles, maybe a stray shower Thursday, Friday. Not very good chances of rain, but then Friday night into Saturday, that's when the front starts to move on in here. We do have much better rain chances, and that's going to stick around throughout much of the day on Saturday. Saturday night into early Sunday morning. Most of the rain, maybe a couple of stragglers, but most of it will continue to work its way off to the east once we get into uh, later on in the day on Sunday. But it's still going to be pretty chilly out there on Sunday. It's just going to be one of those sort of raw, raw kind of weekends. 72 degrees today at noon. Cloudy, again, a sprinkle or two as possible. 75 high temperature today, which is about 10 above normal. Then we're going to be close to 15 above normal on the high end of things. And 22, almost 25 degrees above the normal average low temperature, staying in the mid 60s through the end of the work week. Big front moves on through early, early Saturday morning. So in the books, it's going to go down as high temperatures on Saturday, probably in the upper 60s, but that's going to be right after midnight. And then we'll only be maybe 50 by the uh, late afternoon hours, upper 40s, possibly windy, wet. Great looking day. And See, then uh, Sunday <laughs> is going to be chilly as well. I envision this for a second. Mm -hmm. One day, Mike has a food truck and it specializes only in grilled cheese and soup and only drives out on weekends like the one coming up. I already got my recipe or my uh, <laughs> menu for the. Uh, Cheesy chicken tortilla soup. Oh, nice. That one, that one sounds good. Sounds good. That's He's just recipe. looking for investors, so just let us know. Yeah. Uh, about 10 till right now, 61 degrees. Or just send donations. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you could do that as well. I think you'll be very successful. And tomorrow on GMSA, if you're flying out of San Antonio's airport this holiday season, you'll notice some interesting art. Colorful murals brighten up one of the parking garages. That's tomorrow in this week's edition if, if these walls could talk. Outside with live cam, hard to see much of anything, but we'll give it a shot. Yeah, a little bit better out there. I think that one's 410. We'll check back in with Steven and wrap up GMSA after this break. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're going to have the latest from Washington. The House expected to hold former President Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, in criminal contempt for refusing to cooperate with committee probing the January 6th insurrection. As committee members provide some of the text messages that Meadows received that day from the former president's inner circle. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. It's been a quiet morning on the roads till now. That's right. A lot of problems out there. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cabasas about that seen there at I-35. Yep, that switch just went off right there. We have a problem right there off I-35 and Martin. You can see we have a heavy first responder presence and traffic that's trying to navigate through this area, particularly it's uh, pr looking pretty difficult as well. But let's take you to the map because we are not seeing the roads looking too good in that area. Now, there, right now that crash has been detected off I-35 southbound at Martin Street. You can start seeing that buildup already starting to happen. Not looking good for morning rush. As we take a jump over here, we still have that slowdown off Loop 410 northbound at East Houston Street and at stall detected right there off I-10 westbound at Vance Jackson Road. It is starting to look pretty busy out on the roadways, but let's check in with Mike for the weather. And the conditions are not going to be improving over the next couple of hours. A lot of fog, and it looks like it has gotten actually uh, slightly thicker just from that uh that live cam picture still a half mile visibility at the airport all around the metropolitan area. A lot of thick fog, mist, drizzle, especially in the eastern half of our area and dense fog advisory remains in effect up until 10 o'clock. So it will definitely be sticking around 61 degrees right now. Grab a jacket because kind of a damp chilled and 75. All right. Very special. Aww. Happy birthday to that happy lady birthday. right there. Joy Presley. Happy birthday. She's our morning show executive producer. And of course, we have all done our great job of aging her beyond her years. <laughs> <laughs> no, enjoy your day. We love you, Joy. And we'll see you back here at Happy night. birthday. Happy birthday.